and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And as you can see, I have some books on my bookshelf, but in the process of moving bookshelves, one of my bookshelves broke, and so I need to get a new bookshelf. So I have on my desk over here a whole bunch of books that currently don't have a home because they don't have a bookshelf to go on. It's kind of sad. But hopefully this coming Saturday I will have a new bookshelf to replace them. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking forward to when this office is set up completely. Even though my office is a chaotic mess, I still finished reading. <laughs> And the first book I finished reading this week was Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I loved it. <laughs> so contemporary romance is something I'm very picky with, but this worked so well. I really enjoyed the voice of Nora and how she looks at the world, especially with book tropes, because that is what her job is as an agent. And I just enjoyed that. So often in romance you hear the term opposites attract, but in this you had two people who were very similar who attracted and worked really well together. So it was nice to see that people who are the same can get along and have a romance as well. I am looking forward to trying out some more of Emily Henry's books and seeing if they do as well or if this was just a one-off. I don't know, but I really enjoyed this to the point that when I finished it, I wanted to pick it up again, which means I was loving the characters and I was loving the writing. I also really enjoy that this story is well balanced between not only between the romance between Nora and, and Charlie, but also between the relationship of Nora and her sister, who I'm blinking at the moment. Libby. Her and her sister Libby. And it was interesting to see how two sisters who grew up in the same situation could have very different ideas of, or very, very different points of view of what went on. Like Nora has always felt like she's the big sister and she finds out that Libby felt like she was coming off differently or being and that their relationship with their mom, while they both loved, loved their mother, they both had a very different relationship to her. And I thought that was also very interesting. So just that sister dynamic, yeah. And I loved it because my sister is one of my best friends, and so it was nice to see two sisters who are close, even though they make different choices for themselves and their families, that they could still be close together. And then I finished Melody by David Hoffer, which is one of our self-published science fiction contest books. And I also really enjoyed this one. This is more of a sci-fi thriller, or it had at least like thriller notes to it, if not specifically a thriller. And that's just me personally. I don't think that this is something that is otherwise said. This is about a man who has been diagnosed with schizophrenia and as part of his schizophrenia he hears music which he has not found anybody else who does and then his daughter who's a little child is keeps referring to this music that he hears and he's worried that she is also going to be a schizophrenic in the course of her trying to get her dad to listen to the music they end up getting a car accident and she dies so this is a trigger warning for death of a child. And so the, then the rest of his arc is he's trying to find his daughter, connect with his daughter again, find out how she knew this music that's in his head. There's another point of view, uh, Dolores McCann, who is a scientist. He was going through some structural organizational changes at NASA, and her job is on the line. And then her team and their satellite pickup on a transmission that also has a melody to it. Stephen and Dolores, their worlds connect. 
again, I really enjoyed it, and I will be filming a review for this here in this next week. For what I am currently reading, I am still listening to Elantris on CD as I drive around places, and I'm getting more into it. I don't really like the narrator's voice, and I think it's just because the nuances that he puts on people's voices, it, as I'm listening to it, I'm like, that is not the nuance I would have put if I was reading the book. And I'm like, ah, oh, you're, you're making the character come off differently than I know I would if I was reading it. But the overall story I am enjoying, so I'm still listening to it, especially since I am trying to finish other books. And I have also picked back up A Space Girl from Earth, should have this done soon. And then after that, I will be reading The Stars With Them. And once I finish that, my husband really wants me to read that Okinawa book. not been writing the chaos of this <laughs> office it has to be put away before I can write so I don't foresee me writing for another week or so yeah short and sweet <laughs> then for other media I am still watching warehouse 13 and really enjoying it my husband and I started watching Fox Machina the second season and also really enjoying it and where it is going and how it picked up directly from where season one has left off. And there's only 12 episodes in the season one so if you haven't watched it yet go watch it. It's like 30 minute episodes. They're short and they're just so much fun for an adventure. Also I helped my mom last week. She's part on a board for a storytelling organization and while I was in film school there was a video documentary that I helped film and so I helped her upload that to YouTube. I'm going to leave that down below if you want to see it. It's just it's like a 15-20 minute video talking about the importance of oral stories. It's kind of fun to see that that is up now live. It, it's been on their website for about a year but now to have it on YouTube as well is kind of cool to see. And I have a second part of that video that I need to be working on, which is more specifically about the storytelling retreat that I was filming, which is a retreat they do every year, and my, because my dad is also on the board, they've already asked me to help kind of do an, uh, a reshoot of that. So I've already said yes, in 2024 I will go to the chicken festival and help with filming and interviews of storytellers and put out some updated materials. I like having this extra time because the first time this happened I didn't get a lot of time to prepare and also I was in film school I didn't know a whole lot but now I know more like okay it's, we need you know, camera and we need audio equipment for this to be a better setup. That is my other media. We're almost to the end of January. How has this month been for you? I'd love to know. And have you had any favorites for this month yet? Thank you and have a great day. Mm -hmm.